Welcome to Audit the Audit, where we sort out the who and what and the right and wrong of police interactions. This episode covers trespassing, private property, and identifications, and is brought to us by a private submission. Be sure to check out the description below and give them the credit that they deserve. Before we dive into the interaction, I want to give a big thanks to the sponsor of this episode, Surfshark. Surfshark is the most affordable and secure VPN service available on the market, and they have been a supporter of this channel for years now. I personally use their VPN service every day, and I respect them as a company for helping to provide this channel with the means to grow. One of the many perks of a Surfshark subscription is that it allows you to bypass region restrictions on popular platforms like YouTube and Netflix and view content that is not normally available in your country. Thanks to Surfshark, I can still watch my favorite episodes of The Office, even though it was removed from the U.S. Netflix catalog. Right now, Surfshark is offering the ATA community an 83% discount with an additional three months completely free when you use code AUDIT at checkout. With 24-hour customer service and a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have absolutely nothing to lose. So click the link in the description to claim your exclusive offer now. Thanks again to Surfshark for sponsoring this episode. On May 11th, 2022, the owner of the office building known as the Atrium in Norcross, Georgia, who we will refer to as Mr. Frank contacted the police after an individual he had previously asked to leave the property's private parking lot returned and parked their vehicle in the lot. Officer B. Velasquez of the Gwinnett County Police Department responded to the call, approached the individual who had returned to the parking lot, and began to discuss the situation with her. Officer Velasquez's body camera was muted during the first part of the conversation, so we will begin the video mid-dialogue. We will park her there. Okay. And she asked for her to leave. Mm -hmm. Now I parked at Panera Bread because I'm a customer yeah. of Panera. Okay, but you came back. You're not in Panera Bread. You're in their no, no, parking no, I'm lot. I'm in Panera. You see there is a sign here? Uh, Panera, Panera, Bre Bread park Panera Bread parking no, lot no, is no, over, no, it's no, over no, there. Look right there is a sign and it says right here is Panera Bread parking. Okay. And I'm a customer of Panera. Okay, what's, what's, your, what's your deal? Are you homeless or something? No, we're not homeless. We're in the business here. She says she's a customer of Panera Bread. And Panera Bread does have a sign there that says additional parking lot right here. So uh, that's a mistake. They have a cover that fell off. But the guy who I told he's in the back now. Sorry? The guy I told him this morning. Yeah. He jumps. He's in the back of the truck now. Is this your parking lot? Yes. Because Panera Bread has a sign that says that this is them too. So. so that's their sign, but this is my parking lot. Okay. You own the place? Yes. And I told them already. And what is your name? Yes. Uh, let me get your ID, please. How do I know that this is not Panera? Panera Bread doesn't own this parking lot. And it's that sign is a mistake. You'll go there, you'll see there's a piece that's showing. That's not, that's, not what, that's, not what, that's not what I see. Across the street, there's an arrow. I'm not kidding you. Can you, can you, read, can you read that it sign, sir? It, it, apparently, it's Panera's too. No. Did you allow them to have that sign there? No, we don't, and that's why there's a cover that fell. I can see clearly from here. The sign's still there. I'm asking you to please trespass them. My property. I have no way to verify that all you of these parking lots is your... You like to check the county record? Yeah, I can check. I can yeah. check that. Officer Velasquez claims that he cannot ask the woman to leave because a sign across the street indicates that Panera Bread customers can park in the lot. According to Mr. Frank, the previous owner of the property had an agreement with the restaurant that allowed Panera customers to use the atrium's lot as overflow parking, but he terminated that agreement when he assumed ownership of the property. Instead of removing an old sign that pointed to the atrium lot, Panera management covered the old sign with a new one, which fell off on the date of this incident. According to section 16-7-21 of the Georgia Code, quote, a person commits the offense of criminal trespass when he or she knowingly and without authority enters upon the land or premises of another person after receiving, prior to such entry, notice from the owner, rightful occupant, or, upon proper identification, an authorized representative of the owner or rightful occupant that such entry is forbidden. Likewise, the statute also states that an individual commits criminal trespass when he or she, quote, remains upon the land or premises of another person after receiving notice from the owner, rightful occupant, or, upon proper identification, an authorized representative of the owner or rightful occupant to depart. The trespassing statute is not limited to personal dwellings and can be applied to business property, even when it is held open to the public, as the Court of Appeals of Georgia held in the 1973 case of EP versus State of Georgia that, quote, there is 
no merit in the contention that the phrase premises of another person does not include property owned or used for public purposes. The court based its decision in this case on the definition of person under the Georgia Criminal Code, explaining that Section 16-1-3 of the Georgia Code states that in the criminal statutes, the term person means, quote, an individual, a public or private corporation, an incorporated association, government, government agency, partnership, or unincorporated association. The language of this statute is clear that the owner or rightful occupant or their authorized representative has the authority to remove individuals from the property and forbid them from returning. Even if the sign was accurate and the lot was still used for Panera overflow parking, as the owner of the property, a court would very likely conclude that Mr. Frank had the legal authority to trespass any individual from the property for nearly any reason. Let's see. So why would Panera Bread has a sign there that says... I have an agreement with the previous owner. Why haven't you taken civil action for them to remove that? I did. I went and spoke to them and they put the cover. And then it fell off. It's not, sir. It says she's, she says she's a customer of Panera and this is additional on parking. It doesn't matter. I don't know you and I don't own this place, so I don't know. No problem. I'm happy to verify that. But if this was my house, Panera Bread can send people here? That's the thing. You probably should take civil action and tell Panera Bread to remove that, that uh, sign. Don't you agree? You think a cover will be enough if your neighbor put a, puts a sign? I'm asking them to leave. I don't if a neighbor, I'm, I'm, I'm trying you. to explain, but you want to get your way and... I, I'm asking them to leave. Okay, ask, ask them again. I'm not going to violate their civil rights. I'm not violating. This is my property. You don't know that. You don't know that. I know that. So basically, basically the lady says, I'm a customer of Panera Bread. And they have a sign there that says the Panera Bread. This is an additional parking lot of them. Can't ask her to leave. Officer Velasquez claims that because the sign says Panera Bread customers can park in the lot, he cannot ask the driver to leave the property because he would be violating her civil rights. It is unclear exactly which of the driver's civil rights he thinks telling her to leave a private parking lot would violate, but in general, individuals do not have a constitutional right to simply be present on someone else's property, even when it's held open to the public or owned by the government. In fact, courts have held that even fundamental civil rights, such as freedom of speech, do not override ride a private property owner's authority to control who has access to the property or what activities will be allowed there. In the 1972 case of Lloyd Corp versus Tanner, the Supreme Court determined that the owner of a large public shopping mall had the authority to ban the dissemination of handbills throughout the property, and concluded that property does not, quote, lose its private character merely because the public is generally invited to use it for designated purposes. The court reasoned that, quote, few would argue that a freestanding store with abutting parking space for customers, assumes significant public attributes merely because the public is invited to shop there. The essentially private character of a store and its privately owned abutting property does not change by virtue of being large or clustered with other stores in a modern shopping center. Similarly, in the 1990 case of Citizens Etc. versus Gwinnett Place Association, the Supreme Court of Georgia held that individuals did not have a right to attempt to obtain petition signatures for a recall election effort in, quote, a privately owned and operated shopping mall that is generally open to the public for shopping, dining, and entertainment, rejecting the idea of, quote, a constitutional right of access to private property for political activity. The court explained that, quote, most states that have considered the issue have determined that their state constitutions do not require privately owned shopping centers to permit political activities on their premises. Here, the atrium lot was not held open to the general public like the shopping centers in these cases were. And the driver was simply parked on the property without attempting to exercise speech or any other First Amendment activity. Given the precedent on this issue and the strong protections for property rights that are enshrined in the U.S. legal system, a court reviewing this situation would almost certainly conclude that the driver had no constitutional right to park in the parking lot, and her civil rights would not be violated if Officer Velasquez asked her to leave someone else's private property. Have you ever had uh, no, Panera? Never had this issue before. I, this is the second time these people are here. I told them to leave. They came back. I, I don't see what's so complicated. This is my property. I want them off of it. I don't care what that sign says. They don't own this property. You should sure care. Can I have your card, sir? Yeah, of course. I mean, I'll be so sorry. If you would like to, you can tell them that this gentleman is really adamant that this is not Panera's parking lot. And if they put yes. But we cannot make them leave as of now.
Hello, ma'am. This is Officer Sargwin at County Police Department. So I know that sign is there and all that, but the manager here, he doesn't want any any cars that uh, for Panera here. So I'm gonna ask ask you to leave. I have some training webinar going on right now. It's about half an hour okay. left. I'm gonna finish it and then we go. No, ma'am, I need you to leave right now. The manager of the property wants you to leave. You need to leave, okay? If not, it's a uh, criminal trespass, okay? Well, we're gonna we're gonna ask him to take care of that with Panera. But uh, but yeah, just just park it whatever you need in Panera. Because it's on the sun. I don't want to sit in the sun. I'm in the shade okay. here. I didn't break any rules. Well, I'm not violating anything. The sign says it's Panera parking, so I parked it Panera parking. Oh, that's I'm just a, a sign, owner. okay? But the, the manager, sure. but the manager here is saying that you cannot okay, park ask here. Him to this sign and then I no, I need you to leave right now, ma'am. Do you have your ID with you? Okay. He doesn't want you here anymore, okay? While Officer Velasquez continues to discuss the situation with Mr. Frank, Officer D.E. Osario Geraldo, who arrived on the scene shortly after Officer Velasquez, approaches the driver and asks her several times to leave. She initially refuses, but when Officer Osario Geraldo requests her identification, she silently backs up and leaves the parking lot rather than comply. While Georgia does not have a stop and identify law that requires citizens to identify themselves to police officers during a stop based on reasonable suspicion, Section 16 16-11-36 of the Georgia Code authorizes officers to request that individuals identify themselves when they are suspected of loitering. The statute states that, quote, a person commits the offense of loitering or prowling when he is in a place at a time or in a manner not usual for law-abiding individuals under circumstances that warrant a justifiable and reasonable alarm or immediate concern for the safety of persons or property in the vicinity. A law enforcement officer shall, prior to any arrest, afford the person an opportunity to dispel any alarm or immediate concern which would otherwise be warranted by requesting the person to identify himself and explain his presence and conduct. The statute also identifies the circumstances that an officer can consider in determining whether alarm is warranted as including, quote, the fact that the person takes flight upon the appearance of a law enforcement officer, refuses to identify himself, or manifestly endeavors to conceal himself or any object. Additionally, Georgia law authorizes officers to demand to see the driver's license of the operator of a motor vehicle, which section 40-1-1 of the Georgia Code defines as, quote, any person who drives or is in actual physical control of a motor vehicle. Section 40-5-29 of the Georgia Code states that, quote, every licensee shall have his or her driver's license in his or her immediate possession at all times when operating a motor vehicle, and that, quote, every licensee shall display his his or her license upon the demand of a law enforcement officer. In the 1999 case of Wynn v. State, the Court of Appeals of Georgia concluded that an individual violated Georgia's open container law, which forbids the possession of an open container of alcohol while operating a motor vehicle by sitting in their vehicle on the side of the road, even though they were not seen driving the vehicle. The court asserted that, quote, the term operating a vehicle includes being in actual physical control of the vehicle regardless of whether the vehicle is driven. Given this precedent, a court could determine that the driver could be charged for refusing to provide her driver's license to Officer Osario Geraldo in this situation, since he had reasonable suspicion to believe that she was trespassing, and she had actual physical control of the vehicle. Are you Mainboro LLC? Mainboro LLC? 3300 LLC, agent on fire with Charles Paula. Okay. Registered address 320 Hall Court. Okay. I can't believe I did that with Yeah, you should, you should tell them, you should take civil action to this remove that sign. This is my property, if this was your house, but still, you should because we That's can't do anything. No, I, I understand. Look, I'm not trying to and argue with you. Maybe they have but an agreement. You should go you. and tell them, hey, I, look. I own this place. I'm telling you, if there's an agreement. Uh, what I'm saying, I'm not trying to argue with you. I got them out, okay? I want them to trust us because they're going to come back in five minutes after you leave. You're going to have to go ask them to remove that sign because it, it doesn't it, matter. But I told them not to come back. And they came back. I don't really care what the sign says. And I can't believe an officer is arguing with me about yeah. my property. Yeah, because I'm not going to violate the, the, the right. She's right. She's not wrong. She, decides, she says, I'm a customer for Panera Bread, and there's a sign there. Maybe you should take civil action for them to remove that sign. When Try to use stuff. common sense, sir. I can't believe I did that. 
call you guys a lot, unfortunately. I've never mm -hmm. had this issue. Yeah, because uh, some people are lazy and they're just happy to push people around. I'm not. Shot, but whatever. You shouldn't be. It's common sense. Okay. I, I don't know how you square that, but whatever. I, I'm telling you. There's a sign that says Panera Bread, man. After Mr. Frank walked away from the conversation, the officers left without further incident. According to the Computer Aided Dispatch, or CAD, report, which Mr. Frank obtained by submitting a public records request, Officer Velasquez made a comment regarding the incident that stated, quote, made contact with female who said she's a customer of Panera Bread, so therefore she is allowed to be in the parking lot. I proceeded to look at the sign that says that additional parking lot Panera Bread with a huge arrow pointing at 3300 Holcomb Bridge Road. I proceeded to acknowledge the sign and leave the female alone. The representative at 3300 was upset because I didn't trespass her and that he couldn't believe that I wasn't doing what he is telling me to do. I told him that he should probably have Panera remove the sign. He left in disagreement. Female was not trespassed. Overall, Officer Velasquez gets a C for refusing to assist Mr. Frank in upholding his property rights, demonstrating a fundamental misunderstanding of both Georgia's trespassing laws and the Constitution, and exhibiting a condescending attitude throughout the encounter. Mr. Frank was entirely within his rights to trespass the individual from his property, and as an officer of the law, Officer Velasquez should have recognized and defended those rights. While I appreciate Officer Velasquez's desire to avoid violating the driver's civil rights, he was seriously mistaken about the extent of those rights, and ironically, refused to recognize Mr. Frank's actual constitutional rights in deference to the non-existent right to park on private property he believed the driver to have. Understanding the basic principles of the Constitution is a vital element of successful police work, and Officer Velasquez could certainly benefit from additional legal training. Officer Osario Giraldo gets a B, because although he seemed to have a much better understanding of trespassing laws and property property rights than Officer Velasquez and ordered the driver to leave the parking lot, he did not take any action to confront or correct Officer Velasquez about Mr. Frank's rights as a property owner. In fact, it seems from Officer Velasquez's comment on the CAD report, which claims that the driver was not trespassed, that he did not even inform Officer Velasquez that he told her she needed to leave the property. While I applaud Officer Osario Geraldo for taking the proper actions and removing the driver from Mr. Frank's property, his failure to confront Officer Officer Velasquez will only further encourage Officer Velasquez's inaccurate understanding of the relevant legal principles, and he will likely continue to make similar mistakes until he is corrected. Mr. Frank gets an A+ for knowing, understanding, and defending his rights as a property owner, tactfully challenging Officer Velasquez's assertions, and maintaining a respectful demeanor throughout the interaction. Even though his attempts to educate Officer Velasquez about the law were clearly unsuccessful, I commend Mr. Frank for attempting to do so and for refusing to back down when Officer Velasquez mistakenly claimed that he did not have the authority to ask the driver to leave his private property. Mr. Frank also deserves recognition for obtaining the body camera footage of this incident. Although he may or may not have a case regarding this particular incident, this footage could become valuable if a similar situation should occur in the future. Let us know if there is an interaction or legal topic you would like us to discuss in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to check out my second channel for even more police interaction content.